Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we have another model by McGuybeer, and this is the Flexible Lazy Cat. Now this is a paid model and I will leave the link to this website in the description so you can buy it yourself if you're interested. Whenever you do download the files, you're going to have two files. You're going to have a Lazy Cat and a Lazy Cat with tabs. The only difference is that the tab version comes with little tabs on the feet such that it gives you better adhesion when printing it. If you're, going, if you're going to print the standard scale, which is roughly 14 centimeters long, then I recommend you use the tabs version. If you're going to scale up your model, which means you want a cat that's longer than 14 centimeters, then you can download the regular version. For this video, we're going to stick with the tabs version and assume that you're printing it at the regular scale. So click and drag on your STL and drag it over to your slicer, which in this case is Cura 4.11 for me, or 4.11. Then give it a few seconds to load in. For this model, McGuybar recommends three different settings. The first setting is layer height. What you're going to do is you're going to go up here to profile and click on this tab and he recommends a layer height of 0.16 millimeters. If you have a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you should see that option somewhere near the top. With me, I have a thicker nozzle and I don't have that option, so I'm going to stick with 0.2 millimeters. But if you do have the 0.16 millimeter layer height option, click on that. Now, if this pop-up pops up, click on discard, and that's going to erase all previous modifications that you had on that profile because we're going to use brand new, brand new settings for this profile and we don't want to use the same settings you used for your last print on this model. So click on discard. The next setting is the walls. We recommended a perimeter of two walls or in Cura's case it's called wall line count. We're going to make sure that this number is set to two. Next we're going to go to infill and he recommends an infill of zero percent. Now with most of his models, he does recommend 0%, but I like the added weight. I like my models a little bit heavier, uh, especially these flexible ones. So I would actually do 20%. But if you want to stick with 0% infill, then go ahead and switch that over to 0. Infill is just the amount of material that's on the inside of the model. Finally, let's go over to the supports and make sure this is unchecked because we do not want any supports. And same thing with the build pit adhesion. We're going to make sure that this is set to skirt because we don't want any build pit adhesion for this model. Now, if you don't know, you can hold right click and move your camera around to take a look around the model. Um, but other than that, that's all you need. So click on slice and give it a few seconds to slice up. Another very important thing to keep in mind is that this model does require pretty good bed adhesion. So I strongly recommend you spray your build plate with either hairspray or use some sort of bed adhesion product that you can find on Amazon. I use one and I'll link it in the description because if this model, if any of this any of these pieces don't stick to the bed they're going to fall off or not get connected and then the model's going to be ruined. So make sure you have good adhesion on your build plate. Uh, but now we see that the model has finished slicing and we're given a time estimate of roughly 3 hours and 25 minutes. We're also given a estimated filament usage of 29 grams. Always preview the print by clicking on the preview button. And once again, hold right click and take a look around the model. And everything looks pretty good to me. And remember, these little tabs you see will be removed. So they're not going to stay with the model. You're going to have to take those off. Once the model is done printing, you might have to free up the joints. Now, for the arms and legs, those should be able to rotate 360 degrees. Now, for the arm extension, like the paw and the actual feet, those should only rotate up and down, so make sure those can also move. As for the tail and body, all those joints should also be able to move, so make sure those are free. The head will also move, so make sure that is also uh, flexible. 